You know how they say it's been a pleasure? It hasn't. Where are you going? I'm getting the hell out of Dodge, kid. And so should you. It's just a matter of time. Researchers have been analyzing highly radioactive materials found near the nuclear plant more than two years after the accident. Workers found four types of radioactive substances in the last two months on a riverbed that runs through Nadaha town. The materials resemble black plastic sheeting and fragments of wood. The researchers detected two types of radioactive cesium in the materials with a telling ratio. TEPCO officials say a similar ratio is found in materials more than two years after radioactive contamination. The researchers are trying to identify the materials, but they don't understand how they ended up 15 kilometers from the plant. They say it's possible the materials were blown there by the hydrogen explosions during the disaster. Experts are saying that cleaning up radioactivity in Fukushima Prefecture could cost $50 billion. That's more than four times the amount now allocated. Decontamination work has been done based on radiation level. The central government is responsible for cleanup in the Fukushima Prefecture no entry zone. It's also subsidizing the work in other areas. The government has so far allocated about $11 billion, but it hasn't made clear what the total cost might be. Experts from a Science and Technology Institute have studied the costs. Their estimate for the no-entry zones is about $20 billion. In other areas, they say it's $31 billion. This includes the cost of handling and storing radioactive waste, such as contaminated soil. The government should study the costs before deciding whether to complete decontamination or reallocate the money to help people rebuild their lives. She also says the government is doing the work without considering the expectations of residents. Cleanup crews have years of work ahead of them, but even the decontamination carried out so far has been called into question. It's proceeding at a slow pace, and radiation levels still exceed safe levels in many areas. NHK examined 43 districts where cleanup crews have been working. It compared data before and after decontamination. In 33 of those areas, radiation levels were still higher than one millisievert per year. That's the safety limit set by the government. Areas close to the nuclear plant present the biggest challenge. Scientists are still testing cleanup methods. Radiation levels near the reactors remain 10 to 60 times higher than the official limit. Elsewhere, crews are making slow progress. As the end of March, the Environment Ministry says decontamination has been carried out in just 3% of residential areas in the evacuation zone. Outside the off-limit zone, only 8% of the cleanup work had been done by the end of June. Members of Tokyo's Olympic Big Committee are doing everything they can to win the 2020 Summer Olympics and Paralympics. They're asking people from the tourism and transport industries for help. Groups from Tokyo, Istanbul and Madrid are competing to host the Games. Members of the International Olympic Committee will announce the winner in September. About 250 people attended a lecture in Tokyo. They included representatives of the transport, tourism and hotel industries. I want to ask the participants for their help in encouraging the public to support our bid to host the Games. One participant pointed out that hosting the Olympics produces ripple effects. Host cities invest in upgrading roads and other infrastructure, and the Games drive an increase in travelers from abroad. I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I mean, you were telling me stories before that really set me back in terms of the way that the people are re are not able to leave the area. Um, right, right. Because of because of the, basically financially. Financially, because yeah. they can't get the, the benefits, yes. the disaster benefits, and also being uh, discriminated against in other prefectures. So there's cultural stuff, government action yes. as well, and all in all, it basically serves to try to put a lid on the whole thing. And the ones that suffer are the people at Ground Zero and the area surrounding areas, right? Right. And another factor is that you've got a lot of older people that are living in Fukushima, mm -hmm. like old uh, grandmothers and grandfathers, yeah. and they don't want their families to be broken up and right. separated. Right. So they are also trying to keep their family in Fukushima 
right? Because right. they don't want to be left alone, to die alone, right? Wow. They want the, the extended family to continue. For I mean, you know, these are families that have been together sure. for generations, right? And all of a sudden, oh, my, my child and my grandchild are going to be gone and right. never come back. So the older generation is pressuring the younger people, too. You know, please don't leave me alone. I don't want to be left alone, which of course is understandable. You know, but you need yeah, to think. Of course, yeah, of course, you yeah. gotta think of all the, 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 the big picture right things. So there's, there's so cultural so elements there's, and a, a yeah, lot of stuff going it's on. It's really, yeah, but it's a difficult situation. I think the thing that you told me today that really set me back the furthest was when you were telling me what the children were saying about their, their radiation levels. Oh, yes, yes, Can yes. Can you just explain that again? Uh, yes, they have um, their cysts in their thyroid. Mm -hmm. Right. And so they're uh, either labeled A1, A2, or B1. A1 is you have no abnormalities. A2 means they found cysts in your, your thyroid. Uh, B1 is basically you're probably uh, going to get cancer or you already have right. cancer. Oh, really? um, and kids that are A1 and A2, 43% uh, 40, of the kids in, in uh, Fukushima have A2. And so... 43%. Um, 43%. And they basically go around saying, oh, which one are you? Are you A1? Are, are you A2? The kids know the terms. Oh, they know the terms. These are grade school children? These are grade school children. They get tested, um, I think... They got tested right after the disaster. I think they get tested once a year. Really? Yes. But another problem with these tests is that um, they're, they're, they're only 10 seconds long. 10 seconds long? Really? Why is that? Oh, because they don't want to find anything. Oh, so they, the, the, the longer the, the test can go on, the more radiation yeah, the, they can pick up. No, no, no. The longer the test, the more they can detect cysts in their thyroid. The cysts. It's right, the cysts. Right? Yeah. Right, right, so what the doctors do is for 10 seconds, they check their neck and they go, okay, oh, you're an A1. Good for you. And you were and telling me before, if they get if they get diagnosed as A1, they but can't get a second no, test. because the doctors and the hospitals have been told that they're not allowed to give second opinions to people who have A1 uh, diagnosis. And you said that's because a lot of them are actually A2s? Yeah, they don't want to find that out. And they don't want to increase the percentages that they already have right now. Scary. Very scary. scary. It's very scary. scary. And it's scary for kids to be talking about this. Really? You wow. Know, oh, you're an A1, I'm an A2. That, that they yeah. even know about that type of thing. Oh, they, yeah. And, and, and little three-year-olds, four-year-olds, you know, that, that know which areas are radioactive and which areas they are not. They know that kind of thing. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you know, it's like, oh, no, it's point three today, you can't go out to play. Oh, well, too bad. And you were telling me before that on the school grounds that the radiation is low, but if you stay right, ground, right. it's spikes yes, up. Yes, 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 You've yes. tested it with uh, you?